Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? If yes, please type OK on the chat. And if you feel uncomfortable, please let me know. Hello. Can you hear me well? Okay. Hello, my name is Jun Sun Park, working at the marketing team as product marketing manager. I also introduce my colleague, application engineer, Mr. Ho Gong Gong, who assists Q&A during this training. I'm very pleased to have an opportunity to proceed the core training for our partners. Dusan Robotics has just started running Dusan Academy since the beginning of this year. And you will join several new training class in the second half, such as machine tending application, vision application, etc. This training will be mainly conducted through the PowerPoint and robot videos with teach pandan software called Dart Platform. We will have a Q&A time after each chapter, and you can write your question on the chat and time. This training consists of eight parts. Part one, describe the function of this and collaborate robot to help understand the collaborate robot. Part two, Dart platform, Windows, teach pandan software for setting up the robot work environment. Part three and four, describe test builder and test writer, how to program. Part five, the comments and variables for programming. Part six, describe the key features of Dusa robot force and compliance control. Part seven, describe the industrial communication protocol Modbus TCP slave. Uh, lastly, in part eight, we will use what we have learned to create and demonstrate a simple program pick and place with palette skills. Let me explain the main functions of Dusan Collaborate Robot. First, the motion command. Dusan Robot provides nine kinds of motion. Seven motion derived from the Beijing motion move J and move L. And those will control the robot's movement. 
Let's discuss the details in part 5, understanding comments and variables. The next feature, I'm going to introduce safety features that I think is the most important part of the collaborative robot. The workplace can be controlled by setting up the virtual space between the industrial robot and the collaborative robot. Let's say fanceless is the biggest difference. And instead of a real fence, Dusan collaborative robot provides a total of five types of workplace setting functions. First, space limit is a virtual fence. This is the maximum outer area where the robot can move. And the robot can only be operated within this area. Second, the collision sensitivity reduction zone allows robot to stop insensitively when it collides. Third, the crushing prevention zone is protected area from robot operation, and the robot is not allowed to intrude into this area. And fourth, the con a tool orientation limit zone is an area that limits the direction in which tools mounted on the end of the robot can be directed. And fifth, the collaborative zone is an area where people and robot coexist, where the robot's movement speed decrease or limits its power. When all of these areas are used in combination, the user defined zone allows you to combine two or more properties. After setting up the safety zone, you can output whether or not to enter each area or enable desirable the area through the input signal. I will explain more details in safety IO section. Among safety functions, we'll look at safety monitoring and safety staff functions. A total of 13 types of safety monitoring features keep the robot safe and four types of safety staff functions are applied when abnormal symptoms are detected. The user monitors the status of the robot with 13 types of safety monitoring functions, and it can select and apply four safety post functions, staff functions, according to the each situation. There are four safety staff functions. STO to disconnect the motor power from all joints. SS1, which de-energize the motor after slowing the motion joint to a standstill. SS2, which maintain motor power after slowing moving joints. And RS1, that reacts external forces for 0 0.25 seconds when detecting collision before stopping the robot. In particular, SS2 and RS1 stop the robot without any server off 
so you can resume the program and continue the operation later. For your information, Doosan received the functional safety PLE category 4, the highest grade in the collaborative robot sector. Next are the convenience features of robot. The automatic installation angle measurement function calculate the slope angles of the plane on which the robot is installed through a series of the robot actions. The automatic two-way measurement function calculate the weight and a center of gravity at the end of the robot through a, the part particular robot action. In the tour center position automatic measurement function, calculate the center position of the tool located at the end of the robot. I will explain the three functions in detail in part two working environment setting. Next is the programming environment. On the workshop manager, you can add safety setting, tool settings, peripheral device, and you can create a program with a task builder and task writer. We have just launched an app builder that helps you set a peripheral device such as gripper, tool, etc. by creating work style items including skills. In a word, you can make work style items that you want an interface between the robot and your tool and install this work style item on the teach pendant setting up a three work, work style manager. In the case of using text builder, you can use all skill that you added. However, if you program with the task builder, task writer, sorry, you can just use the block command in putting script. Following are the features of joint talk sensor. It detects external force, motion combined while maintaining co constant force, and also various functions such as weight measurement, the compliance control allows the robot to move flexibly like a spring, and the force control acts as is a constant force to push the workpiece. These two are main dexterous functions of Doosan Collaborative Robot, and you will have more information in part 6. This time, I will explain the working environment of Doosan Robot using Dart platform. You can set the working environment in the work cell manager. As I mentioned earlier, the overall setup of the robot feature is done in the work cell manager. If you connect the robot to Dart platform, which is dedicated teach pendant for Windows, you can demonstrate how to use it by category and it will be easy to understand the function.
First of all, it's a robot category. The robot category allows you to set the robot itself and various safety zones. Dusa robot supports various shapes such as cuboid, cylinder, multiplane, sphere, and tilted cuboid. And also, it can be distinguished by LED color. The number of safety zones you are able to create is a maximum 20. And safety input can be activated or deactivated when safety area switching modification is required during operation. You will have a video regarding to safety zone setup after next fuselage. You can also set features such as robot limit, safety I.O., and safety stop mode, and notch function. Next, let's set the tool weight. The tool weight setting necessar necessarily needed for direct teaching and using compliance and force control. You can measure tool weight automatically by mounted on the flange. If necessary, additional tool weights can be registered with the workpiece held on the flange. Because the robot can recognize the weight holding the workpiece as external force if the workpiece is heavy. Therefore, it's recommended that you add the weight of workpiece simultaneously. If you select the robot to weight by pressing the plus button in the robot category, you can access the screen by entering password admin. First, the automatic feature automatically calculates the weight and gravity center, the center of gravity information of the robot. If you are concerned about interference between the tool and the robot, or if you are using the robot's automator for the first time, you cannot predict how the robot will move. It's recommended that you operate the automator once without the tool installed, then install the tool, then use the automator again. And when you press the automator button, motion is performed for about one minute. During the measurement, the user can observe the robot closely and press the emergency stop button when collide is expected. When collision is expected. To avoid the collision is one of the way to select joint four to six to calculate the two weight. In this case, joint one to three is fixed. And when you are done, you will see the message and the measured weight and center of gravity. If you want to modify the weight information generated, you can change the value. Once complete, you can click the draft button to press OK, and then confirm the information says through the confirm draft.
and the toggle switch is stored off, you can check activated message after typing password when the toggle switch is on and off. And for your reference, the repeated password pop-up could be sometimes inconvenient, so you can Yeah, so enter the setting tab and type admin and you can unlock the safety password. And uh, let me introduce to you to feature that apply the set weight directly to the robot. Click the tool setting and select the item you just created and set it. And when the information of the tool is updated, it's selected normally. When you press reset button, the robot itself not holding anything. Select the tool weight again and press the set button to confirm the value has been updated. Next, check if the weight robot tool has been stored properly and move the robot through the direct teach button. The following is a tool shape setting. The robot monitors and proactively prevents the collision between robot TCP and the workpiece, TCP entering the safety space. However, if the tool shape is larger than TCP, TCP area, then you can set the tool shape to protect the workpiece and tool. You can also monitor the entry of the tool shape in the safety area that will be set later. With the tool, with the weight of the tool, the, the active tool shape can be applied in the tool setting. Select the robot, con robot tool shape in the robot category. Shape can be fo formed by selecting cuboid, spear, and capture, and so on. You can also create additional shapes. Let's set the tool shape without value. To check the tool shape with the simulator. Likewise, you can drag, connect, drag, and rename because they are already created item. After draft, connect after finally save. Similarly, in the tool setting, select the tool shape one for the tool shape and press set to activate the tool information. The next is the mount, mount angle setting. When fixing a robot to, con to the ceiling or wall, you can set the robot's installation angle by rotating the y-axis and rotating the z-axis. The auto measure function enables the, the installation angle auto measurement function. If the slope is less than 5 degrees, the auto measurement calculation function is not available. 
for the weight up tool, it's better to reset the weight after the weight setting because it's detected based on the gravity. If you want to see rotated robot in the simulator window, you need to set up additional world coordinates. Select mount in the robot category and set the rotation the robot base co coordinates to Y and Z direction. In the current situation, the robot is not slopped, so I show you the demonstration by inserting the value randomly and then drafting without the preceding auto measure. If the actual mount is enabled, you will see the mount has been adjusted if you activate the toggle switch of the mount. The simulation screen does not change it based on the mount. If you want to rotate the robot on the simulation screen, please use world coordinates. As I showed you previously, in tool setting, you can set the tool center position of the robot. You can use the function to apply two weight and a two shape. In addition, the set a command and set a button that will be used in the, the same function. I tell you in detail when I explain the command. The following is the user coordinate setting. The user coordinate can be set and used if the reference position of the workpiece is constantly changed. The user coordinate is calculated by clicking the apply teaching point button. Please have a look at the screen. This setting method depends on the how you constrain points, line, and planes. You can create up to 20 coordinates. And if you need to create additional user coordinates, you can override with a custom code, override user card code within the program. This time, we will try to create a user coordinate by using a single point. If you set user coordinate with the line or plane, the number of points that need to, need to be taught will be different. In this case, the teaching is based on the one point. Necessary, the value can be set temporarily where the teaching was performed. With the initial orientation information changed to zero, and we will use only XYZ information of the TCP, you can check the current coordinate by pressing the apply teaching button. Because the rotation information has not been input, you can see that the same direction information as base coordinate is imported. If the rotation is required, you can modify user coordinate by modifying orientation value.
And you can use this generate the user coordinate to apply the move L as Terra to use the command you move. And when you create a coordinate, you get the ID number if you use if you use the override command to update the value. Next is word coordinate. This is a function for changing coordinate to word coordinate in task motion, setting the distance from the word coordinate to base coordinate when the Installation location of the robot base is moved physically. The user coordinate explained previously can be used when the position of workpiece changes. The world coordinate can be used when the base position is moved or sloped inclined after teaching the robot. All of task coordinate information have been thought can be offset by ones. But you can use your, but you can use the properties of word coordinate by changing the coordinate from the base to world in motion command after setting word coordinate. The coordinate values have been taught are automatically updated if the coordinate is changed. You can see the movement of robot in the simulation screen, same as moving or tilting a robot with a word coordinate. Select the word coordinate, and if you press edit, you can check the current mounting pose. The mounting pose is not applied now, it came out as zero. If you tilt the robot, where you can insert the value, rotate, or move the robot. Input the value and apply the, through the draft button. You can see the robot insulin position that is shown. And to confirm it, we can connect the robot now the robot is installed properly, so go back without saving. If world coordinates apply, other simulation will show the screen with the same world coordinate applied. Next is the robot limits. First, you get into the robot limit tab, and TCP and robot will be set. In this category, safety parameters such as force, power, speed, momentum, collision can be set. Each parameter can be set by dividing into a normal mode and reduced mode. Force means the maximum force available on TCP. For your information, reduction mode is uh, when you set the safety zone, collision reduction, mo reduction zone, you can use the reduced mode value. When collision of the robot occurs, there are two collision conditions. First case is for the robot to stop due to the limit of the TCP force. The second case is due to the detection of exceeding collision parameter. This is case that the detected values by torque sensor exceed the parameter limit. The collision indicated the collision sensitivity. 100% is the most sensitive and zero is the least sensitive. Let's take a look at the video of the how robot stops depending on the sensitivity setting. You can see you can change it, the collision sensitivity in normal mode, the, the default value, from the default value 75 to the 95.
and create a simple repetitive motion with a task builder. And save and operate the robot in actual mode. The collision value can be found in the end effect information. The safety alarm pops up and decide whether to stop to or resume robot again. If the moving effect of the robot is low, the impact is low. As I mentioned earlier, this impact is related to the amount of momentum movement. By monitoring both speed and weight at the same time, this momentum allows users to use the robot more securely. And in addition, for the TCP speed of the robot can be up to 3 meters per sec. By moving straight second joint of the long reach robot like M0617. In such case, the speed limit takes the role of the holding the maximum speed limit uh, for that TCP. It's recommended that you set up value for the maximum speed you want to limit and use your robot more safely rather than the referring the value of the A1000. Because the value of A1000 is fairly rough, robot's power directly affected by acceleration Changing power value can be applied to the performance by limiting motor power on each axis. The robot can be accelerated faster or slower. Force performs the external force monitoring not only when controlling force but also when controlling compliance and motion. It also monitors the force input to the TCP even when the robot is stopped and if a force greater than the limit value is detected. The collision detecting function can stop the robot even if collision is detected in direction of a rotation of each axis as well as TCP. The joint speed for each axis is already set to the maximum value at the factory. If you need to set the robot speed limit according to your situation, you can do it in this page. The joint angle limit has a limited value for normal mode in the factory setting. The actual available values allows all axes to rotate plus minus 360 degrees. But if the robot is installed on the floor, It will be limited to plus minus 95 degrees to prevent any collision of joint 2. However, when installing a robot on a circular column or handling a workpiece that is close to the base, you can use a joint angle limit by setting it to a wider range of values. Next is safety I.O. 
the safety IO signal controls the status of the robot by input uploading the redundant signal. All signal is paired. As the version increases, the function is further improved or added. So you need to refer to the user manual for details function. The typical examples of features include the protective stop or resume and the task operating. First, under the work cell manager, enter the safety IO tab as shown. And the values set through the input output tab can be checked. There's no hard wi hard wire in the controller now. Just to demonstrate the output function first. For ports one and two output function, safety talk off and emergency stop for output three and four and apply through the draft confirm draft. Currently, all of LED 1, 2, 3, 4 on this terminal are turned on, and these are can be checked through the status tab on the Dart platform. If you press the emergency stop switch, the safety talk of the emergency stop of the robot is detected and all LED light turned off. And when the emergency stop is off, the port number three and four will be high again. In this state, if you sub on the robot to turn off the brake, the signal assigned to port number 1 and 2 will be also high again, allowing you to monitor the signals. And let's set up the safety input now. Before setting up safety input, it was configured through the prepared switch box. Connect the input button and emergency stop port number 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Emergency stop button should be set high state when it release. And as you can see, Port 1 and 2 after safety talk off through the protective stop or the region. Uh, emergency stop port 5 and 6. and play the simple repetitive motion because the protective stop switch or signal low status the robot recognizes safety stop mode if a light curtain or safety mat detects a signal the robot will stop while the button is being pressed the robot moves 
And when the body is released, the robot stops safely. You can monitor input output signals through the IO signal tab. Safety input is controlled by receiving safety input signals such as safety talk off, emergency stop, protective stop, and reduce the speed status. Most signals are set to low for a safe, safer condition. Similarly, when you download the user manual from the RoboLab website, you can find detailed instructions for each signal, including the latest features. You can output the status information of emergency stop signal or safety talk off signal and so on. Please refer to user manual for new additional features. We, we already watched the video for this practice, let's skip. Next is the robot safety stop mode. I briefly talked about the safety stop mode as I explained earlier. STO, SS1, and SS2, RS1, each of the four safety stop functions is set in the safety stop mode. For each violation situation, you can set the four modes in which the robot stops. The following is a robot safety space setting. As I explained earlier, safety space has five zones. You can also set the safety zone by selecting a multi-user, multi-use custom zone. When you set the zone, you can create You can create the zone by setting the desired area and the shape. The shape is tightly set and the dynamic zone enable function, the dynamic area activate. With the inside zone detection enable, Safety IO can be set to enter the zone. Assigned input output cannot be verified unless previously assigned by safety IO. Dynamic zone enable and inside zone detection enable settings are required in safety IO in advance if necessary. Select a space limit to set the out, outer most area of the robot, the virtual fence. Select the type of the shape and press. The select to set the outer area of the work, work area. Inspection point and value speed. And you can set also the joint margin. You can select robot or tool set position for monitoring. 
You will set where is to detect it between internal and external area of the credit space. And point two is the center point, and point one is our area of the radius. Select radius or diameter, either read or value of the TCP by pressing get post button, or enter any value to place the robot in the safety zone entirely for normal operation. If you need to use the dynamic zone enable and the inside zone detection enable option in the space limit menu, this should be already assigned in safety IO menu. So you have to set in advance. And it never speaks limit and you can see the area on the simulator and this is how to recover if the robot is already out of the safety area you will see the same alarm message again when you attempt to release the brake in this case, the recovery function allows the robot to release the brakes. Actually, this is what we have learned in the basic training. Go to the recovery menu in the status screen and select software recovery tab and then press the sub on button. Now we can move the robot to inside of the safety area manually by directing the direct teaching button. You can do this practice by yourself. Let's move to the next slide. The end effector is divided into gripper and tool. There are three main categories, electric vacuum and pneumatic gripper. In fact, the robot has a function of the presetting signals through the detail input output motor bus communication. And similarly, even if it's a tool, Input the detail input output signal by preset. When programming in the test builder, the skill is formed based on the selected work cell item. With these skills, you can conveniently apply the process such as pick and place or pallet. And for your information from software version 2.8, the work cell items property is slightly changed, so please read carefully the release note of software version updates, update package. And mostly you have to create the skills with the app builder. So how to set the gripper among the anti factors? Output signal needs to be determ determined whether to output from the controller or flanger motor bus. 
The tool is connected to the flange I.O. as you can see. The select flange and assign the output channel. And you can see the gripper works when you turn it on. You can see that it grips when you turn on the one and turn off the number two. And by clicking the action button, you can check. Uh, grasp release confirm that gripper is working properly and also check input signals the input signal can be detected on the flange as a gripper is operated by entering the same status you can assign number one and two to see the grasp release or no signal checked If the reaction signal is unnecessary, you can disable the detection of the input signal by turning off the toggle switch. Uh, if the reaction signal is uh, unnecessary, and if you go to the tool center position uh, TCP category, you will be able to set up the TCP, which depends on the tool of the robot. If you have finished setting up the signal or you want to set the TCP by selecting custom tool, go to the right tab. Uh, if you already know the position value and you can input it manually, or if the exact location of the TCP is not known, the automatic calculation function is available by teaching TCP at any point for different position. Turn on the auto calculation function. Store four different posts. The part that appears in the blue cursor is a part of the being the tote. The blue cursor values are updated when the middle button of the copy behind you can save the coordinate the position. So as you can see, four different points. by clicking the copy button in the middle. You can see So if the TCP is already registered in advance, the value will be calculated based on the registered TCP. Therefore, teaching is required without the TCP being applied. So press the reset button on the tool setting and try to teach the function again.
So it's calculated as x minus 4y minus 2 z 162 millimeter. And when you actually the teacher, you can reduce the error by teaching more precisely. So change the value slightly. One hundred sixty. I think it would be good to check if the applied TCP is properly imprinted, assuming that the robust TCP is located in this much, the moving the the task orientation R X R Y direction in the task motion will cause the robot to move in a fixed position. Read the job menu, RX, RY. Uh, as shown on the screen, you can check. Next, I briefly explain, explain the function of registering or using an item on the machine. The machine category supports three features, turning center, press machine, and injection molding machine by pressing the plus button. The typically, the turning center can be selected as sign signals for opening, closing, doors or performing various tasks on the equipment as detail multiple signals. You can disable unused signal equally when applied the task builder generator skill for each function. Next, peripheral item. Typically, you can set the pre items such as feeder, pallet, board feeder, other safety device, vision, conveyor trackers, welding, etc. How to create the default pallet feeder? Select the number of pieces you need, you choose the shape of the pattern. If you teach based on the word coordinate or user coordinate by selecting the coordinate that are based on, you can select another coordinate. The teaching sequence is composed of the pallets by selecting location 1 and 2 and 3. So you can save it from the highlighted location with the direct teaching button. Very compatible. If you complete the palette the based on this uh, selected item, you will be able to generate a comment associated with the palette later in the task builder. Select the pallet and task builder, select reaper, and you can see the pick and place and pallet at the bottom of the list. And use this skill for a gripper. Yeah, grasp, in, insert, pick and place, release, etc. So do you have any questions? So let's have a 15 minute break and continue the next chapters.
In property tab, you can set the detail setting for the comment that you select in the task list. The details are displayed differently for each command. When you complete the detail setup, you save the comment with the co confirm button. Unsaved information is displayed in the gray state and task cannot be run when there are unsaved values. After the properties of the selected command are saved in the property tab, the color of the command icon is changed from gray to green. To run the task, you, can, you create a go to play tab. If you click the play tab, when the task is not saved, you can see a pop-up window to ask the save. In the pop-up windows, you can save it and then run the program. On the play tab, the status of the robot changes to autonomous mode, and the LED color changes to white because the robot is on the verge of the moving. Therefore, direct teaching or using the job function is not available. If you want to move the robot manually, go to the command or property tab to switch the manual mode, then you can see the robot's LED color change to blue. If you press the play tab, play button without turning on the real mode, the robot will run in virtual mode on the simulation. If you want to move the robot in real mode, you should turn on the real mode toggle switch and then press the play button. When the task is running, you can monitor a cycle time and defector information or IO signal information in the play tab. And you can also move the speed slide to slow down the robot for testing. The task management button is located in the upper left corner of the screen. You can create a new task, save it, or save it as a different name, and export task file you created to USB. If there is a workset item that was not selected when you created the task, you can select the selected workset item to insert or subtract the items. Next task writer. Let's take a look at the task writer. Basic configuration is similar to that of the task builder, so let me introduce the difference between the task builder and task writer. First, skills are are not available in Task Writer because it supports the script-based programming. Therefore, you don't have any option to select works item when you create a new task. The screen that you can enter the name appears right after you create a new task by selecting New Menu. In Task Builder, when creating a new task by selecting New Menu, the screen for selecting works item appears first then you can enter the task name. This is a default screen when creating a new program in Task Writer. The task list is located in the center, and the command property variable and play tab are located on the right, same as Task Builder. On the left side, side of the screen, the task list looks simple due to the lack of icon. The tools on the left, you can use the same tool feature as Task Builder. Unlike Task Builder command, it's separated by name only. The size of command block has become thinner, so you can, use, you can see more command line in the task list at once. Once again, the skills are not available, but you can customize the co command to implement the function you want. Different from the total types of the command in Task Builder, 
There are three, 37 types of command which are divided into motion command, flow control, force, other, and advanced command. They can be also used in the task builder, mostly. First, there are 11 types of motion command. Most of the command start with move. There are commands for stop motion and wave motion. The following are flow control command, if repeat, thread, and subcore and subcommand are included in the flow contro control command. And the force control command consists of the compliance and force control. Other commands include the custom code define, weight measure, and pop up and set. Advanced commands include the hand guide and notch command. I will explain in detail one by one in the use of the command in next chapter. In property tab, you can set detail settings for command that you select in the task list. After settings, you have to click the confirm button to save. After the program is completed, you can go to play tab and run the program. You can move the robot just like you did in the task builder. If you use the debug mode, you can set the skip point. You will have an alarm message to save the task when entering the play tab because the task program must be saved to play. The top most rear mode button is off as default or virtual mode, where the robot moves only in the simulation window when the play button is pressed. When rear mode is turned on, the robot can actually move and speed up the robot's movement with a speed slider. You can monitor TCP, tool weight, collision, and the force information for the current robot in the end effector information. In IO signal tab, the information on digital input output signals can be checked in the real time. The task management button is located in the upper left corner of the screen. You can create a new task, save it, or save it as different name and export the task file you created USB. Next, let's learn about understanding command and variables. First, let's learn about the motion command. The motion command is divided into the largest category, move J and move L. The biggest difference between the move J command and move L is the is that they use the different coordinates. If you refer to the slide, the move J inserts into the angle from the point 1 to 6 joint position. Move L on the right side will input the location and angle information of TCP, which is X, Y, Z, and A, B, C, R, X, R, Y, R, Z. This is because all derived command will follow the joint coordinate or task coordinates, in other words, x, y, z, a, b, c value. This, this is because all, de sorry, the, let's take a look at the command that will follow it and see what's different. First, let me introduce the pros and the cons of the move J and move L. Please have a look at the explanation. Move J is a joint movement and the start and stop simultaneously at a specified angle for each axis. The advantage are that it's fast and able to avoid the singularity, 
and suitable for long distance travel. In the case of move L, linear motion or task motion, it moves straight and rel relatively slow compared to the move J. Because TCP's path is kept straight, fine movement is possible. So let's watch move together through the practice. I show you the motion that repeatedly involves the move J and move L. Save the first location far away as move J and the second location near as move L. Now let me show you the save the position several times. Move to move the robot with a different speed. As you can see, there is a noticeable difference between move J and move L. Straight line for move L, but move J takes the shortest path for each joint move. Therefore, using move J for long distance reduces the unnecessary movement of each joint, reducing cycle time. And if you want to specify the exact path of the robot, you can use move L to suit your purpose of use. As you can see, move L is straight line, move J is a streamline. For the path, each joint will take the shortest path. There are some simple practice about each motion command, and we suggest that you practice by yourself. And with this practice, you can learn about motion difference between move J and move L. Also, the features of move L, such as relative movement, local speed compared to the global speed, that could be separately defined. Next, we will talk about the supply motion move SJ and move SX. Move J and L is a motion that moves continuously and when you press an add weight point, a segment is created and each segment is taught when it wants to be. Up to 50 segments can be created and the order of the store location can be raised and lowered. The supply motion move J, uh, supply motion move SJ and SX are functions that have already blended, so you cannot apply the blending option that will be explained later. SA, click SA motion and more dislike and delete the counter return command and make a five waypoint waste uh, five segments. You can press the get post button on the teach pendant and save the post by pressing save post button in the copy in the middle. And if you want to check the desired location after teaching is completed, press the move to button, go to the location. If it's necessary to stop while moving, the robot will stop immediately in, if the touch is released. It's primed to pass through the all of the total spots and at 
the end point, the robot stops and moves its initial, initial position. Move SA follows the joint coordinate as described. By the, by the way, move SX on the other hand moves along task motion. and follow task coordinates. Relatively slower than move SJ. Under the same condition, speed condition. With this practice, you can learn about the motion difference between move SA and move SX, and each motion feature such as how to impute the segment and set the properties. Please practice by yourself. Next, I will explain about move C command. Move C is a circular, circular or arc movement through the two points from the current position. The teaching point is for position 1 and 2, and since there are the three points to make up the circle, the current location of the previous command will be used to move the arc. So the default for total ang circle angle is zero, so destination is position two. When you set the co connection value, if it, it moves as much as you want and then stop. For example, 180 degrees would move only halfway and 360 degrees would rotate one lap. And for optional angle, you set the acceleration and deceleration intervals area to move the final travel distance with the optional angle added total circular angle. So the total distance is total circular angle plus optional angle Multiply, multiply by 2. So move C command will also follow the task card date and will test drop down. In addition, the move C command has the function to fix the angles. There are three options for setting angles. Keeping the teaching angle as it is using it from the first teaching option angle and fixing the radius to the center of the robot. Save the final location to previous command. We will save the starting point with move J. Position one and two. And with the move two button, check the tote uh, point and Use a constraint condition for play movement by copy button. This is how the move C command was created uh, through the three points. Since this optional angle and total circular angle from its initial position, every motion that moves to, push to position two.
So for example, if you add the total in the total circle angle 90 degree and the option angle 45 degree each, then the total travel distance will be 180 degree. Through this practice, you can understand easily about how to create the circular motion and angle option. So if you want to rotate the 360 completely, there are two options. First, just input the total circular angle as 360 degree, or you can divide you can add uh, the optional angle, for example, 45 degrees, and you can just uh, put 270 degree for total angular distance. Next, move B command is a function that allows constant movement of move L and move C continuously. So essentially, you must set the radius value per motion to allow the robot to move at the normal constant speed. You can set up the total of the 50 segments, such as ply motion. You can use it in applications such as gluing that requires constant velocity movement. And when you create a segment and insert each position, you can create a smooth motion that moves according to the radius as shown. When you create a segment, select move L and move C alternately, and blending is applied during moving to move L and connecting move L to move C. The radius value on the spot where to motion the mid cannot exceed the half value of the total moving distance. For example, if the moving distance is 100 mm between the move L and move C, the radius can be set up to 50 mm. For move C, position 1 and 2 are set in the same way and the radius value is set for a smooth connection with the sub subsequent motion. Select move B and create a waypoint segment by adding move L and move C. And if you run the task of move B without the radius value, the following alarm message appears. Let's see. So therefore, you must set the radius value depending on the situation. The set radius value can be viewed on the right with the parameter. And in most cases, you will need to set a more radius value if you receive the following message when setting blank is. Robot T-Speed moves at the same speed as it looks. The next motion I'm going to demonstrate is a move sp spider T 
this is the motion that moves the, from the center to the maximum radius, as you said. It can be used for hole searching or air blowing pegginol application. When you have the trouble for velocity or acceleration setting for spider motion, you can use the time setting. And if you use the global speed for spider motion, other may occur frequently, so we recommend to use local speed. I will explain the detail in the video. A move spider can be used by setting the number of processes, maximum radius, uh, reference axis. If the speed acceleration error occurs continuously, you can program it easily using the speed type. I demonstrate when the errors occur frequently and how to handle them. If we move a spider and change the maximum radius, extra distance and the coordinates from the base coordinate to coordinate. So that you can perform the spider based on the two Z radius. If you set the speed as default before you begin, you will see an alarm message indicating TCP speed is faster than the allowed speed is acceleration. It cannot work. So as mentioned earlier, you may want to set a time or set a local value for proper speed and acceleration. So the simple way is time setting, so input to 30 seconds and try it again. So that means that for 30 seconds, the robot will move a total radius of 100 millimeter by turning the spiral motion four times. Setting maximum actual distance allows to the robot to move the forward while sim simultaneously moving the spiral motion. You can learn about how to use the spiral motion and apply it to Paginot applications. So please practice by yourself. Next is move periodic. This is a motion that repeatedly vibrates or rotates at a certain interval. So you must input the period after selecting distance or angle for amplitude. If you select a different repeat interval for both directions, you can move along the path that is shown. Same for move periodic. And the motion that moves up the up and down the z axis. So 100 millimeter inserted z axis and period of five seconds. And the repeat number is three. Robot will move up and down repeatedly for a specific number of times. The robots will be able to perform the complex motion as shown in the And if you set the x direction to 100 millimeter and the period to 3 or 5 seconds, you can create a different motion depending on the different cycles. And you can make also the rotary motion instead of just doing simple up and down motion. 
So you can set the RZ, RY, RZ sequentially. Input the 15 degree RZ. And rotate it every three seconds. In the current case, it's a motion that rotates Z axis basis on the base coordinate. Uh, if you rotate the base on the two coordinate, change the coordinate to conform and execute, you can see the only six axis rotate. The coordinates change it to the two coordinates. So you can understand about the amplitude and the period and actual distance. Next is move JX. This is a command that merges X, which means move J and move L. It solves the singularity problem in linear movement by maintaining the solution space position and moving to the task coordinate position. That means moving to the position of move L moves to the close to distance. The robot is able to move to different position with a single teaching point that is the characteristic of the solution space. Let's take an example to understand the solution space. First flip and no flip. By default, the robot position can be towed into position, one with the axis 5 inward and the other with the axis 5 outward. Or the position where the axis 3 is above or below. The TCP is the uh, same location, but you have a different solution space. Finally, you can move the same po position depending on the weather to axis corresponding the so shoulder or left or right. In addition, the singular problem, you could say move JX is it's, uh, one of the best way to move without the singularity problem. So desired the TCP destination while the moving the location is desired position. So with the move JX. Just change it to wrist to no flip. Even if you move in the same po position, you can see the moving flip and no flip position repeatedly. Next is wave motion and stop motion. Wave motion is the command that executes the next motion after the preceding motion is completed. That prevents error from the occurring the when you try to set a motion where blending is unavailable after the command with blending. Even if you put a zero second as a wait time, the motion can be completed safely after the previous motion is finished. The next is stop motion. This is the command that stops motion in progress. It's used with the conditional statements to stop motion command when a signal or a situation is detected. Q stop is the fast stop function, and S stop is, uh, uh, let's say, the gently slowing down approximately 1.5 times the maximum deceleration 
time of the quick stop, Q stop. However, although there is not much visual difference in the options of two commands, so you can understand that there is a slight difference in the rate of the deceleration that stops in the safety category. So example of wave motion, blended body is applied after the simple move command. Insert and save the supply motion to next command. And an error will occur related to the blending mode. Please have a look on the screen. Move SX, SA, B, and move spider motion cannot be overlapped with other motions. So use wait command between the preceding motion and other motions. So between move M and the move S, S, let's add weight motion. And play again. Then it works without any problem. And we can use uh, most of motion command with the sync and asynchronize, async option. Uh, the sync mode is a sequential control that moves to the next command after the previous motion started and ended. And async mode is a control that the move to the next command when the previous motion start simultaneously and connect the motions. So please have a look at the figure on the screen. Synchronize motion mode, sync mode, move to the next command after the motion command being executed is completely finished. But by the way, the async after preceding motion start, then the following motion follows after the signal on during the motion. As you look at the picture, it starts from the first position Point one and point two and point one and point two. Star point one with the move L, star point two, the move L. The difference is a sync and async. Generally, after completion of first motion. Then second motion start and ends to arrive at the final destination. However, if we start with the async mode, the second move command is conducted simultaneously after starting the first motion. So it moves just like the overlap of the two motion commands. Let's take a look at the video. Add the move J moving to the initial position and name it as home by comment and save the pose. Second command will move the robot in the relative coordinate. The direction the the point is negative for x, so minus 200. Of 
course, to do the base coordinate, and the next command will do the same relative movement. Based on the base coordinate, minus z direction. So input the value, minus 200. Also put comments on each command for easy understanding. And let's see. And change the change from the sync to async and you will see the second command we move will be executed the first command move simultaneously so the robot it will move diagonally Let's see. So it may cause inconvenience due to the feature of the async mode. It cannot even approach the near of the first destination by async mode. Therefore, we can use the radius option to make the trajectory smoothly in set area by applying async mode. Now I explain the radius that I mentioned frequently. The async function is activated on the interval for the radius before the robot reaches the arrival point of the motion command. The robot can be moved smoothly without stopping by the next motion. You can perform calculation on the async interval. Radius cannot exceed a half of total dis distance. For example, with a total travel distance 100 millimeter, the maximum radius would be 15 millimeter. So there are the motions that cannot be blended, such as move SX, SA, move periodic, move spider, move B, as shown previously. The command have this command have already been blended. If you use those commands after applying radius value, you face an error message. If necessary, use wait motion or stop motion command to avoid the error. Next, I will explain the duplicated override option. Even if the radius is applied, the preceding motion uh, this option determines whether to complete while keeping the preceding motion or override it with the following motion depending on the following option. So when you select the override option for a second motion, it moves without following the directional properties of the first motion. And when it goes forward to the point when the first motion reaches to the set radius point. So radius really cannot be applied by PC motion. So 
So previously 200 millimeter relative movement because the async mode has already been applied to the previous motion. So you can apply blending option over radius interval to desired value in sync motion. So the radius interval cannot exceed half of the distance, so a value below the 100 millimeter. That's that, so 100 millimeter, the radius value. You can understand the async and the radius have the same properties. So as you can see, during the 200 millimeter travel, the robot will run override the ro motion 100 millimeter behind. So previous example is blending mode as duplicate. Now we change the override for a second motion. And let's check. It moves without following the directional properties of the first motion at all. The radius 100 millimeter, yeah, it goes directly to the stop point two. That is the override. And duplicate when you set the radius 100 millimeter. Then the TCP moves like this, but the override it moves directly to the point two. So. Do you have any question about motion commands? So tomorrow we will learn about the variables and other command and also the compliance and force control and how to use a modal TCP and the slave function. And also, finally, we will practice together the pick and place with the palette skill. So thank you for attending the today, the core training. And see you tomorrow.